Hey, what's going on guys? This is David Avalon and today we're going to be reviewing a match in Grappers Quest 2003. It was my Grappers Quest debut against Todd Margolis. This is a, a good wrestling matchup. We're both pretty good wrestlers. We both have a good jiu-jitsu, so uh, it becomes a really nice battle once things start to heat up. As you can see right now, we're just fighting for control and for tie-ups, trying to find our range here and see what's going to happen. Now you can see Todd's being really patient and uh, being flat-footed, sitting back. And he sets up a nice arm drag to double, but I was able to see that coming and move out. Now we're pummeling here. I'm trying to score an underhook. He's looking wrist control, trying to clear my wrist to set up a, a shot. And you can see how he's hanging back and how I'm also hanging back there because generally I don't want to engage somebody who's waiting for me to move forward. It's, it's giving them initiative. And some more movement, working towards the center. Again, trying to feint my way in, head snaps, touching the head. Likewise, he's using good wrist control entries to try to establish uh, a good grip. And you see how I am moving back purposely when he hangs back. You know, it's like a lot of people who fight Leo to Machida, how he's always backing up and they move forward. I would always advise stand back because that guy is used to moving backwards and fighting backwards. So don't go into his game. Instead, make him come to you. A uh, good feint there, but he sees it and sprawls. Now I'm trying to fight for my underhooks again. Good shot entry, but he wizards and works his way out of it. Like I said, there's a good chunk of defensive wrestling here going on. Again, good wrist control, and I think he's got head control, so I shouldn't be allowing that right Again, never let anybody get a grip on you. Always break it. You should always have your clinches on your terms. Don't let, ever let anybody get a clinch that they want. It's always about persistence. Fighting, oh, head snap to a shot. Good sprawl. Level change, faint. He didn't react. Oh, nice entry by him, but I was able to slip out. Again, that was another arm drag to single. Here's a double. He sprawls into a front headlock. Try to shuck it, but he squares off again. You see a lot of energy has been put out in this match. But we're still keeping the pace here. But you can see he's really hanging back. So whenever he hangs back, I try to hang back as well. You, you, it's sometimes that's hard to do, especially if you're a very aggressive fighter because you feel like it's passivity, but it could be a problem for you if you engage somebody who wants to wait for you. And he just shot in again. We sprawled. Now we're clinching. I got a head control. He also has head control. Another single, but not a good shot there. You know, if someone has your control of your head and you shoot, Chances are you're not going to get it because they can feel you coming in. Level change by Todd. You know, we're both pretty much mimicking each other. Another level change there. Both the defenses are from us are pretty solid. Uh, here's a deep shot up coming around to a body lock. He's got boom. Takedown right there. First takedown of the match. He's still got a guillotine though, so I have to respect that. Ah, but now it's released. So let's go ahead and pause that and look back to see how that went down. So let's look at this again. So I'm hand fighting with him here. And I clear the wrist there. Shoot in. Not a good shot. My, I was bent over, my head down. But I went to the waist rather than the legs which allowed me to fight a little bit. Now, he almost hit me with a neck wrench right here, but I was able to square my hips off. And now I have the body lock, and I have this inside leg trapped. And now I'm pulling him over that, so it's a reap. 
and taking them down to the backside. This is kind of unorthodox. Normally, I would always tell you, do a takedown with your head landing on top. But in this case, because he was trying to neck wrench me, I went the other way and it worked out. Moving forward, he gets up right away after all that work to score that takedown. <laughs> but now we're back in our wrestling battle. Um, trying to circle in, stay in bounds. Hand fighting again, wrist control. And now you can see he's being more aggressive. Probably because he's down points. He looks for that shot inside trip. He's got the underhook right now, so he's got the advantage. But then right here, you see I score the underhook. And I'm able to put him once again on his back. Score another two. Let's look at that sequence again. So from the beginning here, he shoots a blind shot. No setup. So I was able to sprawl. But he establishes an underhook. And then looks for the inside trip. But I was able to step out. Now even though he has the underhook, because I have the inside head positioning, I am still in good control of this tie-up. And when he goes for that final shot, he loses the underhook, and I get it, which allows me to run him over with this far knee block slash pancake and uh, take him down. Coming back in bounds, now I'm up 4-0, uh, and you're going to see that he's going to start pressuring a lot more forward than he was before, right? And this is just strategic because now he can't afford to sit back. He needs to score, and this is going to make it easier for me to counter as well. So it's a little bit more of a role reversal because I was being very aggressive early on and he was being passive. And now he's going to be more aggressive and I'm going to be countering again with underhooks and then score another takedown. Let's look at that one more time. So here we go again. He shoots again. No setup. So I was able to get the underhooks and I got double. So I got to jack him up, get the buy lock. And I think at that point he realized he was going down and he was going to try to score a butterfly sweep with a momentum. But that wasn't going to happen. And again, underhooks are the key to this takedown. So now I'm up 6-0 here. And I'm working from his butterfly guard. He's moving to establish a full guard. I go to combat base and have my knee inside. I'm more than likely looking to knee cut, but he is able to re-guard. I know Todd has a crafty guard. Uh, particularly good at triangle chokes, so I have to keep my head up and avoid getting caught in any danger there. He opens up, tries to sit up for that Kimura. It's not there because my posture is too high. I drop for like a really weak ankle lock attempt. Uh, didn't commit to that, so obviously nothing really happened there. Uh, once again, now open guard, feet in the hips, helping create space. I'm trying to pressure to the right. A lot of times, whenever I can, I try to pass on the opposite side because I know a lot of people don't practice their guard on that side. Like most people like practicing guard on the right, so I try to work them on the left. Uh, Todd's doing a really good job. Again, he's established an underhook here. He's looking to try to convert to a shot. Now you see I'm digging my own underhook in. Uh, a lot of battles with the underhook here. It's pretty much the key to this match was underhooks. Uh, so far, every takedown I've scored has been with underhooks. So let that serve as a lesson for you. Underhooks are important. Cartwheel pass attempt to the back. Trying to jump the hooks in. But I didn't get there. But I got to the turtle. So I grab the ankles. Go for the cartwheel. And then notice my other hand pulls the ankle through to force him to turtle. At this point, I try to jump the hooks, but you'll see that Todd's hands are inside my legs, blocking them from coming forward. So at this point, I opt to get back on top position, circle towards his back. But you can see Todd's left shoulder is already real low, which is going to make it easier for him to roll out as he did there. Right after recovering his guard, Todd goes to set up a triangle, but I read it and I drop into an ankle lock here. First, I'm attacking a straight Achilles, and then when I switch to a heel hook, he adeptly defends. Let's see that again. So right after recovering his guard, Todd looks to grab my wrist on the left side there. And you can see then he tries to pass over the leg to get the triangle. I'm blocking though. And now I'm going to take advantage and drop for the straight ankle lock. I am able to get my legs in good position initially. Knees pinched, heel over his hip. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not getting a good bite. It's hard to see. But you can see it's actually Lloyd Irvin there coaching Todd, telling him to push my ankle across there, which then weakens my heel hook, and at that point, I have to abandon it. 
He's back in his guard. He works right up to his feet. I let him. And we're in the final stanza of this match. He's pushing very hard. Wrist control. Looks for a high crotch. I'm able to circle out. Again, another shot. Underhook. He tries to turn to head and arm. And boom. Another takedown uh, towards the out-of-bounds table there. Again, here. Blind shot. I'm able to catch the underhook. He looks to try to body lock and head and arm me. But... My position is too strong there, and I get top. Now, moving forward, we're back in bounds. Again, he has to pressure hard. He's looking to get inside clinch. Another shot, another underhook here. He's going to try to force an inside trip again. I'm able to defend because I step behind. And then finally, one last-ditch effort, and I'm able to stuff that takedown. So now, he goes again to set up a blind shot. I'm able to catch with an underhook. And set up a front headlock here. I tried to pancake him, but I was too low and he was too high. Now he has the overhook, so he's going to look for that uh, inside trip again. But if you notice, he's not blocking my left leg, so I can step out with no problem. And at this point now, time's running out. He just goes uh, last-ditch effort to try to score a trip. or Maybe a lateral, but he was just out of position. But you can't blame him. And that wrapped up the match. As you can see, underhooks were the key to victory. And if you want to learn more about how I use underhooks, check out my website, underhookvideo.com. There's a whole course covering everything underhook related. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like and leave a comment below. Now, if you want to get more weekly videos right into your YouTube inbox, subscribe to my channel now. And for even more blog articles and videos, you can visit my website, which is davidavalon.com, and you can also learn more about my courses there.